Rhyme of the Frostmaiden is a great adventure for 5th edition that introduced an interesting mechanic attached to character creation, secrets. Icewind Dale is a land of intrigue and mystery, where former criminals and disgraced nobles sneak away to live out their years in peace, and locals have become accustomed to such individuals walking among them as long as they keep those old habits where they came from. The secrets presented for each player offer a springboard for their character's backstory, and I like many of them, but I think they need a little more detail to really have an impact in the story. Not all secrets are created equal, but I believe I've expanded on enough of the secrets to allow a party of four or five to all have well-integrated secrets that are all connected to the themes of the adventure. Some secrets I'm going to ridicule and pass on, but I do believe any of the secrets could be expanded on and turned into something great. The book also suggests that the secrets should be random, and I throw this concept into the Sea of Moving Ice, opting to tailor each secret to each character. I do think it is still a good idea to present options each player if possible, but don't allow the players to know each other's secrets through this process. With all that being said, I'm going to go into each of the secrets presented in the book, my thoughts on them and what I would change, and then I'm going to provide some new secrets along the way. Let's dive right in. Ah, the first secret, and the first of many secrets to allow the DM to simply send someone to murder this member of the party. On the low end of interesting, even with ties to the important lore figure, pass. Now we're talking. This secret is a direct reference to The Thing. With the setting of the campaign being a frozen tundra, just like the movie, I find this secret great, as it can be a huge gasha to the rest of the party when it is revealed. I have a suggestion to make this secret even better and more tied to the events of the story. Include everything this secret has by default, and add the following. I am from the Underdark, and was a slave to Zardarok Sunblight, who leads the Sunblight clan of Darugar, which until recently dwelled in the subterranean depths beneath the spine of the world. They worship Deep Dura, the Durugar god of conquest. Durugar all possess natural abilities and can enlarge themselves and turn invisible. Zardarok is obsessed with charlatan and can't stand the thought of anyone else possessing it. A non-magical crystalline substance as strong as metal, though considerably easier to work with than steel. These deposits tend to be suffused with demonic magic. I have witnessed proof that prolonged contact with charlatan can warp a creature's mind, causing madness. Zardarok himself wields armor and weapons made of the substance. During the migration of the Sunblight clan to the Icewind Dale, I was able to impersonate a Durugar and escape servitude. I made it to Ten Towns and have been impersonating someone I saw in my travels since I arrived. Now this secret is directly connected to the plot and this player can identify signs of the Durugar infiltration into Ten Towns early. They would also recognize any charlatan immediately and know the dangers it can have. It's a two-tied secret with parts that can remain hidden all the way to the end of the campaign. This secret is laughable at best. If you choose to include this secret, Drist must make a cameo in the adventure. If you do nothing with this secret, please don't bother including it. The second secret where the DM gets to send someone to kill a member of the party. Yawn. Okay, we've got a close encounter of the 5th edition kind here, and unfortunately it is the first of the secrets that don't have a long enough payoff. The players resolve anything related to this one as early as chapter 2, and it never comes up again without some major antics from the DM, like allowing the party to pilot a nautiloid. There is a way to spice the secret up a little bit, but it can't really be helped with the longevity much. For this one, we need the help of another secret, so I'll pick it back up again later. Okay, okay, this secret is related to the Icewind Dale. It's useful in many early encounters that involve Yeti, and can be expanded on using content from the book. As an extended bit of background, I think this secret is best suited for a player who also chooses to be a mountain-born Goliath, the new subrace from the book. My additions are as follows. I was born in Wormdoom Crag, home of the Thunalakalaga clan. I was separated from the clan as a young child and became lost in the wilderness. The only person I remember from the clan is my friend Ogalai. She was a few years older than me and we often played goat ball together. She had a nasty scar on her face that she didn't like to talk about and no one really liked to play with her because of it. It never really bothered me. After I became lost, I was found and raised by a yeti. Although I relied on my ferocious guardian for food and warmth and never quite adapted to the cold as well as her, I can speak yeti and have advantage on charisma checks made to influence yeti and improve their attitudes. I know a few things about yeti. Yeti stalk their prey and are most likely to set ambushes using the color of their fur as camouflage. Yeti fight fiercely with their claws as strong grips. Anyone caught unaware by the yeti were unable to keep from looking at them in the eye, which paralyzed the unsuspecting victim for a brief time. Because of their fur, yeti are not affected by cold attacks, but they have a natural fear of fire. 
Yeti like to keep the head of any humanoid victims they kill, mounting them in the wall of their cave as trophies of conquest. The Yeti who raised me, Adama, was smart enough to understand that I was not one of her kind. When I became of age, she led me to the only civilization she knew, Ten Towns. I have lived among Ten Towners ever since. Recently, I have learned where my birth home, Wormdoom Crag, is located. I have not yet returned and am eager to see my clanmates, but am nervous to reveal myself. Adama taught me about a couple of the well-known Yeti in Icewind Dale that are known to be hostile even to other Yeti. She told me to avoid them at all costs. The first is Korgra, the abominable Yeti of Icewind Dale. He is the mightiest and deadliest of our kind. He worships Auril the Frost Maiden, as most evil Yeti do. While Auril's grip on the Dale is this powerful, he cannot be convinced to back down. The second is the Red Yeti. He appeared in the last couple of decades and, in Adama's words, is mad. He seems to be driven by the bloodthirsty nature to gore and consume all that he encounters. His coat is stained with layers of blood, which is where he gets his namesake. He cannot be reasoned with under any circumstances. A ten day ago, I returned to the cave where Adama raised me. She has grown old, and I often check on her. When I entered, I was met with a horrifying sight. Adama had been slain, and the majority of her body eaten. Based on the nature of the killing, and the fact that her head had been taken, I have a strong suspicion she was killed by the Red Yeti. These additions to the secret clearly take a lot of liberties, but without these liberties, the secret has no sustenance and relies on the player to come up with everything on their own. This also adds the Red Yeti, a non-character from a Chapter 2 quest, into the adventure. I highly recommend you allow this member of the party to confront the Red Yeti on the course of the campaign if you run these additions. This character is also a prime candidate to receive lycanthropy from Oyu Minartok if they ever meet her during the adventure. This secret is great for a player that didn't get cold resistance with their race, but it is a little boring. One way to spice it up is to allow only this player to receive the blessing of their Frost Maiden described in Chapter 5, or to encourage this player to possibly align with Aurel. However, I have an even better idea, but I will need the help of another secret, so we will pick this one back up later. This secret can lead to some serious antics and is honestly pretty entertaining. The idea that any NPC from the book can instantly become related to the party's backstory is charming. Malbor Tafrak, Imdra Argalath, Avarice, the possibilities of antics are endless. If you want to run this secret, but want this player to also have a secret that is more related to the adventure, then feel free to add it as a bonus to anyone. This secret is alright, maybe consider adding it to the Ragged Air secret, otherwise it isn't worth having on its own and can just be thrown out. This secret feels like the Yeti secret, but less useful. If you have a Ranger or a Druid, maybe just have this happen by default rather than be a secret, something that surprises even the player themselves when it comes up the first time. I like this secret, but I would put it in the category of secrets that don't have long enough payoff. Maybe the player could keep the details of this secret all the way to the end of the adventure, but it isn't at all related to the plot, other than the fact that the vessel likely crashed due to the conditions of the rhyme. This here seems like the perfect secret to attach the Midwinter Child secret to. It would also pose as a good explanation as to how the baby survived the exposure, even with the swift rescue from Oyim and Artok. Here is a way I think the secret could be expanded on a bit. When this character meets Oyim and Artok later in the adventure in Chapter 2, she tells them that her mother didn't just sacrifice them as a testament to Auril, they did it because their mother feared being usurped. Explained elsewhere in the book, Bjornhild's husband and king of the Tiger Tribe was slain by orcs sometime after the character was born, and Bjornhild took the throne. She is not part of the royal bloodline, and the character is the rightful heir of the tribe. This mild clarification and motivation is all the secret needs. If the character attempts to confront Bjornhild before her ambush at the Caves of Hunger, ensure she escapes and survives for that final confrontation if possible. Furthermore, if you use what I added to the Midwinter Child secret, this character becomes one step closer to being a champion of Aurel and possibly becoming an adversary before the end of the adventure, if your player is on board for that kind of arc. With more longevity and development than either of the two original secrets, this is a much better secret now. This secret is a pass for me. It has no impact. While it can be connected to the adventure if you try, I do think the other secrets are just easier to work with and frankly more interesting. This secret is another joke at best. Throw it onto a character who is from the Icewind Dale, like the old flame secret, and have a laugh when it comes up. The third and hopefully last of the secrets where the DM sends someone to kill someone. I don't have a joke for this one. We have arrived at the Aliens reference. This secret is great, and the idea of a chestburster happening in D&D is honestly terrifying. A great secret to put some pep in a player's motivations. But what if we had more? I can think of two short Ithlids who would love to get in on this outrageous secret. 
Yes, this secret is perfect to pair with the escaped prisoner secret. Instead of using a slad, what if the curious pair instead attempted the process of seromorphosis? For the uninitiated, seromorphosis is the process of turning a humanoid into a mind flayer with the aid of an ithalid tadpole implanted into the brain of said being. The player would no doubt have to seek the aid of the mind flayers to get the tadpole removed, and would feel pressured to keep the condition a secret due to the nature of the transformation. This does remove the chestburster element of the secret, but you could also say the slad tadpole was implanted by a slad held prisoner by the mind flayers to connect the secrets if you wish, or something like that. But as written, the condition is far too easy to cure and doesn't require much active effort from the player, but it is a cool reference if you want to throw it in just as is. I want to like the secret, and I do. A member of the group being a part of a secret organization, having a secret agenda that supersedes the wants and needs of the party, having access to a network of allies or potential enemies connected to your organization? There's a lot you can do with the secret, for sure. You could write an entire subplot about the Gentarm and the Cauldron from the East Haven quest with North Maxwell Denner and Captain Scath as a mid-campaign boss. But I have another suggestion. What if a party member was a member of another organization more directly tied to the plot of the adventure? What if this member of the party was sent to the Icewind Dale from motives beyond the wildest dreams of the other adventurers? What if a member of the party was in the Arcane Brotherhood? My suggestion is as follows. I am a member of the Arcane Brotherhood, a cabal of powerful wizards that operates out of the host tower of the Arcane, a multi-spired structure that towers above Luskin, the city of Sails. The Arcane Brotherhood sent four of its members, including myself, to investigate rumors of a lost Netherese enclave that crashed in the Icewind Dale nearly 2,000 years ago. A fifth wizard, Nas Lansamir, learned about the expedition and decided to form her own. She made her presence known once we arrived in Bryn Shander, claiming she had also been sent on the expedition. Shortly afterwards, arguments erupted about her next move, and the group decided to split up and search for the enclave independently. Netheril was an ancient, magocratic human society of Faerun whose influence was felt across the realms for thousands of years. The Netherese people lived in flying enclaves, miles above Toril. The arrogance of the Netheril grew to the point where they attempted to attain divinity of magic, and wound up destroying the Weave. In the resulting maelstrom, the Faerunian pantheon was altered and most of the flying cities of Netheril came crashing to the earth. So far, I haven't found any leads that will bring me closer to discovering the missing enclave. I am beginning to suspect that I am lost without the assistance of at least one of my colleagues, Avarice, Dazan, Nass, and Valen. Avarice is an albino tiefling evoker with a pair of gargoyle companions. She has a squawking raven familiar named Skelm. Dazan is a human illusionist and red wizard of Thay who travels with a white named Krintas. Nass Lintamir is a human diviner with a white arctic weasel familiar acclimated to the cold named Zelenor. Valen Harpel is a human necromancer of the prestigious Harpel family of Long Saddle. Valen has a snowy owl familiar named Batral. This secret is huge and obviously super tied to the campaign, but I like the idea of this character walking into East Haven and seeing one of their former peers being burned at the stake, thinking to themselves they will never reveal the truth fearing the consequences. I would imagine the other members of the Arcane Brotherhood would think the character is attempting to blend in and may or may not blow their cover depending on their disposition towards them. This secret would also make it easier for a member of the party to ally with Dazan or Valen later in the adventure. Surely this will prove to be more interesting than the Harpers who have no role in the story. Well, that is the video. I'm going to be making another one of these videos for Rhyme, going over my fixes for the Trials of the Frostmaiden, which has its own problems. Don't be afraid to make your own secrets and talk with all of your players individually and see what ideas they have as well. I will supply the text for all these secret editions in my Discord channel if you're interested in using them and you don't want to type it all out. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check back for more 5th edition content.